Here's how it is. 20 years ago, a great show called Firefly came out. No one cared about it. Took it in, spit it out, never gave it a second chance. My name's I Am T Rex, captain of the I Am T Rex channel. I make videos on movies, games, and shows, no matter how old they are. I took in my friends as well, and we reviewed some stupid stuff. You got a movie or show that needs remembering? We're up for the challenge. Don't much care what it is. Yeah, you're at the title of this video, right? I picked this title very carefully because Firefly, I think, is easily the most underrated TV show of the last 20 years. And that 20 years is very specific because the best show of the last 18 years goes to Dark Place, because that's the best show ever. At the end of the day, this is not just a horror show. This is a show about great original writing. He whisked off her shoes and panties in one movement. But enough about Garth Marenghi. It's Malcolm Reynolds and his crew's 20th birthday, and I think it's their time to shine. And if there's any show that deserves the love, it's Firefly. This show is absolutely great, and for 20 years it has been flying under the radar with no one really appreciating it. Now, this show isn't big at all. You probably haven't even heard of it. And if you have, it's from that one dude in your friend group who once cosplayed as a homeless looking guy and says, Don't worry bro, I'm Malcolm Reynolds! And then you just kind of stare awkwardly as he has an awful little part down the middle of his head? So Firefly is a sci-fi show with a cult fan base, and nowadays there just isn't a lot of chatter about it. The content covering Firefly on YouTube is drier than the African desert. Yikes, looks like the last big video on Firefly was by Jeremy Johns, and that video is nine years old. This fan base is more dead than my rap career. Where are my kids? I looked in Madrid. They should all be grown up and looking like Sid. There are a lot of shows that come out now, along with there just being more content than ever for consumers. That can lead to a lot of great shows being lost in the shuffle while new trash ends up just floating to the top due to how much stuff is just being produced. And that's why I'm here. Firefly's been mostly forgotten, and that's such a shame because it's great, and I'm not gonna let that happen while I'm around. This is one of the best shows of the last 20 years, and it is still super underrated. So let's talk about Firefly and why it's the most underrated show of the last 20 years. Now what is Firefly, you might be asking? Well, it's a science fiction show about a group of people that fly around the galaxy on a Firefly class ship doing jobs and bounties and smuggling stuff across the universe in the future. Now I know it sounds pretty basic, but the universe and world building a firefight completely flips this pretty basic premise on its head. Earth has been used up, leading to humans moving to a different solar system and the government being condensed into an organization known as the Alliance. They are technologically more advanced and live in futuristic cities in the center of the universe, while the planets on the outskirt of the solar system are more western influenced and less futuristic due to how they are further away from the Alliance. This leads to this awesome combination of spaceships and high-tech gadgets with very futuristic planets in the center, along with lots of planets that are more on the edge with not as much tech, still using normal revolvers, pistols, and horses in the Outer Rim. At least this feeling of a very unique world that doesn't feel like any other science fiction world or universe. The world building from each episode and each planet to planet is just incredible, and that's due to those little details at the end. How much is the Alliance involved here? Did the Rebellion have ties here? Are there mob bosses or bounty hunters? And that makes every episode feel very different and each planet feel very unique. Each episode is a new scenario for our crew, and every new scenario and planet they are thrown in who all feel very different. And that's what leads to what should be a pretty episodic show being constantly fresh. And the way that we are introduced to this world through the first episode is absolutely incredible. This show is one of the best opening episodes for a TV show ever. It opens up showing us Malcolm Reynolds, our main character played by Nathan Fillion, fighting in a war against the Alliance with his friend Zoe. They are part of a group called the Browncoats, which is a rebellion against the Alliance. We see a bit of this battle, seeing how they're both war heroes and fighters, only for it to cut instantly afterwards, showing them on their ship as smugglers. They ended up losing the war. And the rebellion losing is such a fantastic change of pace for science fiction. It feels so grounded and real. I swear, nearly every rebellion rebellion in science fiction works when they should have the lowest odds. This does a great job at grounding the world again. These characters feel real as people who have failed and are still trying to live out their lives. Within the first few minutes of the show, we have set up the entire world, we meet the cast, we get to see the ship, we get the backstory of everything, we know how intricate the world is, and we truly see just how great of a show this is shaping up to be, and we're also introduced to the best part about this show. The secret formula to this show working as well as it does is the characters. The main premise of this show is having characters that are on a ship going from adventure to adventure and just being put in a new situation after the other. And the premise for a show like this requires that every character is good and all of the
the cast has to have great chemistry or else the show would be dead on the line. Now lots of shows have tried to capture this formula with your Agents of Shields and DC Legends of Tomorrow of all having the very same formula of characters on a ship going from mission to mission and they've all had varying degrees of success. But none of them are Firefly. Firefly stands alone because just like every other god tier TV show, Firefly is one of the greatest TV ensembles of all time. A lot of these actors are nerd icons. You have Malcolm Reynolds, the captain of the ship, and he's played by Nathan Fillion. You might know him as Cade Six if you're a Destiny nerd. He's also in a ton of movies I love like TDK and the Suicide Squad, and he's just in a bunch of nerdy stuff. You also have Alan Tudyk as Wash the Pilot, and he's also been in a jillion things. He's played K2SO, and most recently has really been well known for playing the Joker in the Harley Quinn show. And uh, there's nothing to call his performance in that other than Turbotastic. In Firefly, you also have Adam Baldwin playing Jane the Mercenary, and he was in Full Metal Jacket, and the rest of these characters, Shepard, Kaylee, Simon, River, Zoe, Inara, they are all these really good actors who just aren't very famous, but great at playing these characters. Every character here is so interesting and great, and they're all so different that it leads to a lot of great banter. This show does a great job at developing all these characters and you buy all of them. They all feel real. You never just see an actor playing themselves. Malcolm Reynolds is so likable and interesting, and Nathan Fillion really carries the show here. You got Wash and Zoe and their relationship being interesting as the only married couple on the ship. You also have the mechanic Kaylee, who is the heart of gold on the ship, along with being the only mechanic and engineer. You also have the doctor and the package that he brings onto the ship as well. You also have the mercenary Jane, and he comes with a whole lot of problems. And you also have a preacher and a prostitute. Come on, you know that leads to some fun conversations. I'm not saying every woman can be the epic, the epic trophy wife of all time like Melania Trump. And those conversations are the real magic of the show. You know how in The Avengers, the best part of that movie is the second act when all the characters are on the helicarrier and just talking and bantering? Well, that is basically this entire show. You guys should be sold just from that. Now, Firefly was created by Joss Whedon, the same guy who directed Avengers, and now while he isn't exactly the best nowadays, this show is what the kids would call giga cringe. That shouldn't take away from how great this show is, and the formula works incredible here with Firefly. Having these characters be so likable with such great dialogue leads to every moment being must watch and electric. There's never a moment that doesn't have your full attention. The dynamics between these characters are so great and the relationships between these characters as well feel so real due to how they talk and the conversations that they have. And within the short runtime of one season, you completely buy into these characters, which then leads you to watching these amazing episodes of this cast you love as they get stranded on an abandoned ship against monster aliens or they have to figure out how are they going to pull off a train heist when things go wrong. And this is when you start to realize that this show is set itself up with a perfect formula because you'll watch these characters go anywhere because each episode is so fun and different and you'll follow these characters to the end of the universe. And this show goes on one of the most legendary runs of episodes I've seen since Breaking Bad. This show from episode 8 to the finale is one of the greatest run of episodes I've ever seen with all of them just being incredible and it just shows that the team making Firefly had a pulse on exactly on what the show was going to be because we see this show in its absolute prime at the end of the series. It was in its absolute element. I cannot stress how amazing that last stretch of episodes are. And this leads perfectly into what every Firefly fan harps on, which is the fact that the show was cancelled after only one season. And I know it's a massive turnoff when it comes to TV. A lot of people are going to tune out the second they hear that it isn't properly concluded, but that isn't fair to the show. This show is so good, with such a great cast, incredible set design, and honestly a legendary run of episodes, it'd be foolish just to not watch a show because you know it doesn't have more seasons. That said, since the show was cancelled, it has a ravenous fan base that will praise to the end of their life how this was a perfect show with no mistakes and for some unholy reason was cancelled. Due to this show's martyr status, this show doesn't usually get the criticism it probably deserves. Even though it's great and I think it's fair to bring up how underrated this show is, I don't think it's fair to just say this show is perfect because it's not. Episodes 5 to 7 here are just not as good as the rest. They're not bad but they are just not as fantastic as the rest. They are definitely where the show gets a little too comfortable with the formula and just completely relies on the cast chemistry instead of having drama in there created by the narrative. They quickly realize this problem and that leads to those last six episodes being as fantastic as they are. You can see the show make an audible and it becomes even better for that. The best episode of this show is episode 8. It's called Out of Gas and it comes right off the tail end of Janestown which isn't a bad episode but doesn't even compare at all when it comes to story, direction, and overall quality of Out of Gas. You can see the creative team realizing the potential of the show and making it even better when they could. Now the key word for that is when they could. This show came out in the early 
early 2000s and didn't have a huge budget, so at times it seems like the CGI budget of this show is $14, and the music in this show is also not that great. The music in this show is what I would call, uh, how would I phrase it, the complete opposite of subtle. Someone will say something like, you know what, I never liked you around here. And you can almost hear the director off stage just going, okay, cue sad music. But I think that's what gives the show its charm. The show doesn't have the best effects. The music is cheesy. The performances are all in. Some of the supporting cast you can tell are just people who were called in on favors. The show is wearing its heart on its sleeve and is trying so hard to convey what they're really trying to go for. That is why Firefly is so great and so underrated. You can feel the love and passion that the creators and crew had for this show. There are so many shows now that come out that just feel so lifeless. But here, you can feel everyone involved loved this show and wanted it to succeed. Every episode feel like they're trying something new and that they're trying to make a sci-fi show that isn't content with following everything else that had come before it. The budget of this show today is around 50 million dollars and there's more heart and soul in these 14 episodes than anything I've seen out of Rings of Power that came out recently and that show's budget was 465 million dollars. This show is great. It's a great sci-fi world with great actors playing these lovable characters that have the greatest dialogue in the world and it just makes every episode so fun to watch. You get to see this absolutely incredible world in a science fiction world that feels pretty different from what we see normally today in science fiction. This show truly feels like its own thing and I think that's what makes it so great. Even though it is only one season, if you haven't seen the show it is worth checking out. It is so unique and such a good change of pace to see a television show that actually has love and care put behind it and doesn't just feel like something else has been shoveled out to meet a quota on a streaming service. Firefly truly stands alone. It's a great show that truly doesn't feel like anything else we've seen recently and no one is still talking about it. I hope now that 20 years later more people have caught on to how great this show is and actually went out and watched it. This is just a great season of television. It's so good, it's really short, it's only 14 episodes. You can go watch it, then go back and watch something else, but it is such a nice change of pace. If you are bored of all these shows that are coming out now and you just want a show that is truly great and doesn't really miss, Firefly is that show and it's been there all along. Firefly is great. It still lives up to the hype and it's still worth watching 20 years later. When it comes to Firefly, I would give this show an 8 out of 10. It truly just is a great show. And you can tell the later seasons would have been even better if we had just gotten them. Firefly, you were something real special. A great show. But it's time to bury you. That's the way.